next thing that we're going to take a peek at are switches. So we're going to be looking at switch characteristics, the responsibility of a switch. Just going to spend a little bit more time kind of diving deeper into our traditional layer two switch. What the heck is that switch responsible for doing? So first, he's responsible for basically remembering right those MAC addresses of every device that's plugged into the ports of this switch right some of our access layer switches like you know 3800s 3700s um, some of these can support layer 3 obviously anything a 3000 series or higher from our catalyst family can do routing when we look at 4000 6000s those can all do routing um, some of them can support power over Ethernet. When we look at PoE, if we're doing voice over IP, if we have um, surveillance cameras, if we have um, wireless access points, all these guys a lot of times need some sort of power. So if the switch itself can support PoE, power over Ethernet, then we can actually power one of these devices from the Ethernet cable. We just have to make sure we have the, the correct Ethernet cable and we have our PoE settings properly. Also, some of our switches can support stacking. If you guys just go to Cisco's website and type in like the Catalyst you know, 2960 model, you can do a comparison and you can see what the different models offer. Some support stacking, some don't. Um, same thing with the 3000 series. If you look at, um, you know, like the 3750s, a lot of times those support stack wise, where maybe like the 3560s don't support stack wise. So, um, so different models are going to have different features and characteristics. Some might have um, copper 10 gig ports as those uplinks. Some might have fiber uh, ports as their uplinks. Uh, when we look at stacking, um, some might have that dedicated stack-wise cable that connects in the back, which gives us, you know, faster backplane speeds. So, you know, there's all sorts of different ways to configure your access layer switches. But really, at the end of the day, what do we need to remember? Well, we need to remember that we're going to be configuring access ports on these switches. These ports are going to be going to the end user. Yeah, and Meraki has switches too, right? Perfect. So these access layer ports or these access ports go to the end user. And then our trunk ports are going to be our switch to switch links. When we think about those trunk ports, right, these are going to be layer two to layer two switch. All right, or layer two to layer two. And eventually when you guys move on to ICND2, one of the things that we'll look at is that spanning tree protocol runs on these trunk ports. So spanning tree or STP is just a layer two loop prevention mechanism. 